section. What time is it? It says I'm live, but child, I need to start checking this time and getting better with that. Hold on real, real quick. What time, what time is it? I think it's like 6.15. So I will go ahead and write that down. Hi, everyone. I don't know why. Well, actually, people are coming. Hey, Shannon7527. How you doing, baby? Um, Penny Girl, uh, C Ben 20. Hey, are you pound cake? Hi, love bug. We are gearing up for our uh, new a new episode 618. Thank you, Dex. Let me bring you on. 618. One second. Oh, where are you at? I invite you. Come on. Hi. Buddy, how's it going? It's going amazing, buddy. How are you? I'm amazed. I can't complain. I, I went to my favorite place on the earth today. On earth today, you know. On earth? Yeah, you know my favorite spot. You know my spot that I love to go to. That's a, it switches, though. So is it crab-related? No, well, so you need it to eat crabs. Look, man, you got know we started to show but I'm, I'm ready to play. To, to play, guess what? What's the spot? I love the dentist today. You know I love the dentist. Oh, my! <laughs> I love going to the dentist. The dentist is my favorite place to go. I was in there today. They were like, we're doing a routine cleaning. I said, yes. <laughs> Take me yeah, there. Please. Do your thing. <laughs> well, you might not have trusted them that much because you really might have an obsession because, guys, I called Dexter right before the show just so we can, like, kind of go over the topics real quick. I said, are you drowning? Like, what is happening? Are you being attacked? I'm brushing my teeth. No, you just let the dentist clean it. What's the issue? I brush my teeth four times a day. Oh, hey, Bro Talk Live. <laughs> well, if you guys watch Bro Talk Live, I'm not a dirty person, but I did have this on yesterday. <laughs> it happens. Listen, it happens. Listen, your parents ain't never back in the day. These your outside clothes for the week. Don't get them dirty. <laughs> I'm close for the week. <laughs> Show outside clothes for the week. <laughs> or what did my mama used to call them? The play clothes. These are your play clothes. <laughs> I changed the hat. Oh, well, listen. You did. That's okay. You did something. And you know what? I'm so pissed off, but speaking of bro talk, because when I woke up this morning, <laughs> God must have been with me or something. I was knocked out last night. I woke up this morning and saw the alert. I said, I missed that, bro. <laughs> Oh. Was, so yesterday on Bro Talk, we did this. One of the topics we did was Donald Trump, and I don't know if you've seen this, but Donald Trump he did a um, we'll jump right into politics. But we have some local stuff that we want to get into first. Stuff. Yeah. I just want to say this one politic thing really quickly. It's really funny. So um, it's actually not funny. So we did Bro Talk, and one of the um the topics we did our conversations is Donald Trump. He did a rally, and he was like, "Do you guys know what the N word is?" And people, <laughs> you know and he's like nuclear nuclear is the new n-word i just thought that was so funny and with like i liked our reactions to it so i did like a little tiktok video and i posted it on tiktok and i did the hashtags like trump donald trump and stuff like that why did i get all these pro trump people liking the video and I'm just, this is not what i intended for so I mean, That's what trolling goes wrong. What's wrong? <laughs> and they probably in there. I knew you were one of Trump's African Americans, brother. You yeah. stand with us. I was like, I was, it was weird because it got views. It was like seven hundred views, which I normally don't get on TikTok. And I'm like, I think I'm gonna keep it up. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, Jason said this camera angle is hitting. Well, thank you, Jason. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to do a little song. He said that, and I immediately went to shift in my camera angle because I want my camera angle. Boy, you ugly, and you just got to be accepting of it. <laughs> oh, boy. Sitting up here, because that's the only thing. Be sitting up here, you be feeling so ugly and not put together. So it's <laughs> nice when you do get a compliment where it's like, oh, really? Okay, maybe I'm giving something that I know was supposed to be gay. <laughs> um, I have something that I want to run past you too it's about zodiac signs and beyonce so i want to i want to get into that but i know we have some local news that we like yeah all right guys so let's get into local unfortunately gun violence it just continues to plague the city of philadelphia 
<laughs> we just got um, yesterday. We news broke there was a scrimmage game handled um, happening at uh, a local high school, Roxborough High School, um, and I think it was four or five different guys jumped out of a car. Five assailants. Yeah. 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 Which they keep saying these people are teenagers, but I'm not sure how they know that exactly either. When there's, 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 um, there's a video of it, I guess you can. I know there's video, but they're masked up, so you can't tell exactly who they are. So that's why I'm like, when they're said they're looking for five teenagers, I'm. But again, they're police, so they should have more information than we have. Um, but five people dropped out of the car. They waited until the football game was over. Um, and after they jumped out of their car, they proceeded to just spray gunfire at anybody walking by. Um, I guess they were going after a specific target. There was a 14-year-old boy that passed away, lost his life, and come to find out they're saying he was not the intended target. Four right. other boys um, ended up receiving, receiving uh, gunshot wounds. Um, and people were just traumatized by the whole entire thing. This was not something that happened late in the evening. It was like 4 o'clock in the afternoon right after the game was over. And I just I I don't even know. So it's funny. They were saying that there were 60 rounds or 60 bullets that they found. 60, yep. mm -hmm. I think if I'm not mistaken, it was five kids kids essentially that were like shot mm -hmm. this I was on Facebook yesterday, and one of my old coworkers was posting that her son was one of the kids who was shot. And it's mm -hmm. because, like, I've known this boy since he was born. Like, I knew her while she was pregnant with this kid. And just to know, and I know we are, like, it all, it hits us differently when it's closer to home. And I feel like for a while now, it's been hitting, and I'm like, oh, this is scary, this is scary. But then, like, hearing that and knowing that I've interacted with this kid before that was, like, a part of this, it's just like, is I, I don't know like it's weird like I've always think, thought something needs to be done but now it's like we really have to do something about this now and like like what exactly do you do I know Dexter you brought up in a group chat not too long ago like I guess there's been a conversation about canceling concerts within the city like well okay with my wife about this and she works at a school so she's seeing mm -hmm firsthand and I'm like it's kind of weird that this stuff happens and like like yesterday this situation happened and today it's business as usual like scrimmage mm -hmm. happened today still happened like nobody's like I, and I don't know if the proper thing to do is to cancel the games or whatever but it's a little odd to me that you would this would happen then the next day we don't address it like I just think about September 11 that happened and the very next mm -hmm. like, overly addressed like we were like we addressed it for quite some time and I'm not and I'm not mm -hmm. Like same skill, but it's close enough. Like it's yeah. gun violence in this city. We've we've for thirteen thousand shootings in Philadelphia this year. It's terrorism. It's just it's in home. It's homebred terrorism. That's exactly what it is. But I feel like Dexter to just double up on your or double down on your point. I feel like people it because it happens so often. It's people are just desensitized by it. Yeah. So they don't have. I mean the. Who was he? The, the 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 lead of the school district. What's that title called, Dex? As a former employee. The, the, I'm sorry. Say that again. The the lieutenant of the school district. Yes, yes, and he's newer to the area, so he was interviewed a little bit today, and they asked him, like, "Are you going to put a hold on, you know, after school activities?" And he's like, "For I guess for all schools," and he was like, "No, we're we're trying our best." But no. And I kind of, I don't know. It's just like, for me, the core issue is guns. Why are we having a conversation? A superintendent, thank you, God. <laughs> because like, the entire time I'm telling you, I'm sitting here confused. I'm like, his title is not the chief. I reported. Yeah. He has a title, and I'm like, why can't I remember this man's title? But thank it's you. okay, it's fine. Well, good thing we hand, we don't have no kids yet, so we get a pass. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, it's a lot of parents out there. They don't be knowing these teachers. <laughs> a PTA meeting. They got food there. It's weird though, because not to cut you off, but I, like I do agree with you. Like the problem is guns, but I. Mm -hmm. I 
you can't control guns, but you can control like you can control the city a little bit better though. Like you, you guns are going to be there. Like there's nothing we can do to get rid of guns. Even if you ban them, these people have guns that they but didn't now, walk into no store and buy yep. at 17 years old. But mm -hmm. like, like if you put curfews in place and like people are caught outside at a certain time, like I don't know, that kind of I think that may curtail the issue a little bit. And then when I mentioned the thing about the concerts, it sucks because like a lot of these concerts are for kids of those ages, but like yeah. you don't deserve it. Like, like, do you know how dangerous it is now to like want to take your child to a concert and not know what's waiting in the parking lot for your child, for you, for who? I feel like they, it's always been there. Guns have always been around. Yeah. People have always cast up in their car, but like mm -hmm. we're using it. And like, I don't know, I just, I hate being this person that gets like scared to like do stuff in life or whatever, yeah. but like, I'm getting there. And see, that's why I'm somewhat against it because I don't believe in walking in fear. Like, of course, walk in, be secure. You know me, I'm the queen that keep your motherfucking head on the swivel. But what kind of country are we heading to if we're we're limiting the freedoms and liberties that we're supposed to be about like just everyday activities going to the movies going to the show i mean going to a, a concert um going to see a football game like are we headed toward a militant society like i just it, it's a lot it's scary times and it's just like you said you can ban the guns all you want to but now i feel like it's just kind of too late for that because even if they did do a full-on gun ban, people are out here making these ghost guns. Yeah. So how are you going? I feel like it's, I just feel like it's just out of control. And I, I, I don't know. I don't know. And then there was also the situation at Wawa that happened um, in the Northeast this week where mm -hmm. a group of kids, I should say, a group of kids, teenagers, they ran into the Wawa and just ransacked it. Like they stole stuff out of there. They, mm -hmm. just, they ran away. The news has been, and I guess police officers have been like really kind of going hard with this situation because they've been posting like the video, like surveillance cam from Wawa, and they're showing the actual faces of the people who ran into the store and everything. Mm -hmm. I just don't know what the purpose is though. Because like, okay, like you do it, you find out who it is, then what? Yeah, exactly. Are you going to bring the parents up on charges? Because we, a lot of them, it was like a 10 year old and like an eight year old out there. Now, and I did say that, I said, now listen, just being that age and having younger siblings, I would hope the 10 and eight year old were with their older siblings. Cause I, if I wanted to go to the football games, they had to come with me. So I'm hoping it's one of those situations, but more than less, yeah. we don't, we've seen it plenty of time where these babies are out here committing like crazy ass crimes. And I just, I, I, I we're, Philly is in a state of emergency. I don't know what that, they don't want to call it that, but if you come here, do know, keep your head on the swivel because I just, I don't know. And like you said, you go with the concerts, it does make sense because depending on the show, you know, like who was the target audience, but yeah. I just know me for what I do, like even clubs and things or bars and restaurants, I find myself staying away. I'm always checking what the vibe is because I know if it's a certain type of vibe, not saying that nothing can pop off, but I feel like the chances are just a little, might be a little bit better than just going out and just, oh, I want to go see the, or just one of these drill rappers. I'm not trying to get drilled at the, at the damn show. I'm sorry. I do. I like the music. Yeah. I think it's an art form, but it's, it's no more art entertaining life. Life is art at this point in time. Um, just to lighten it up a little bit. No, we're not. We still didn't do politics. I know. We got to get into the politics. We'll, we'll have a little fun with that. <laughs> you know, because look, we came back, and I feel like for the most part coming back, we kept it uplifting, but we got to address what's really happening out here. You can't sugarcoat stuff, guys. No. But I feel like we do a good job with keeping it uplifted. Um, also, a little bit of, well, it's local news, PNB Rock. Um, finally, there is something. Um, we got to the bottom of who committed this crime, and that is just even more damn sad. Yes. Four-year-old Freddie Trone. 
um, and his 17-year-old son, that Betty Tron was the driver. The son, the 17-year-old son, went and actually committed the murder. Um, sources have said that they had actually been in that parking lot for a while before before P and B Rock and his girlfriend got there, and it just goes back to all like the the rapper lyrics of I remember the game. Some of his lyrics came up, and they were like, "You go to that that uh, that Roscoe's Chicken and Waffles on that location. Anybody at some point will just come in and snatch your shit." So if that's like be ready when you be prepared when you go into those places, and I say that because so many people were basically trying to blame his girlfriend. Which, because she dropped the location and her stories where they were, which is still never a good thing to do. So I think, I hope people learn from that. But, like, to fully drag that girl the way that she did after being seen, after seeing her boyfriend being gunned down and murdered right in front of her. I just didn't understand the public, like, we got to come down on her. And even some of the biggest celebrities, like, I'm, I'm like, that's got to stop. I think people were angry, like, at the situation, but, like, honestly, like, looking at what this situation actually was, this is someone that in a car with their child and encouraged their child to do this. Like, you, you, your child did this. I'm sure you guys had a conversation about it. You were open with it, and you let your child do this. They got in this car, and you drove away with them in there. That is pathetic in every and and it was a whole family ring going on. They actually just recently locked up the uh, the 17-year-old the stepmother. She's 38 years old for basically, I guess, being involved in it in some kind of way. I don't know if she's harboring or she knows the whereabouts of her husband. And I believe it's actually the husband who was still on the run right now. The, um, That's the, uh Yeah, the, the, the son has been caught and the stepmother is behind bars right now, too. So it's just... It's it's just sad. Uh, it's sad. But everybody just, please just move differently. It kind of seems like in that regard, maybe it, it, it was inevitable. But people just, just be mo more coherent. If you're going in a space where it might not be too hot, don't put all your jewelry on. Don't bring attention to yourself. Don't drive around in a hot car. Like, I, but that goes back to the comment in the statement that you made before where it's like, I don't want to live in fear either. And it's just like, yeah. I, it's like, what do you do in these situations? It's like, this is stuff that I own. And like, now it's like, I can't walk out of the house with stuff that I own because somebody else is looking to take it. Like, it, I just, I, it's, it's, it's like, it's so hard to live these days. It really is. Like, I just, I, I don't get it. And I would love to, I just want to move to a country where they, this don't happen. But you this know, ain't everybody's norm, y'all that to him and he was wearing the jewelry and stuff like that but like regular people this happens to them wearing black panther shirts you get what i'm saying like it's mm -hmm. just like, we're really in like the rough crazy times right now yeah i never want to say because you know the old heads it's the end of times <laughs> i don't want to say that but it ain't a good time out there definitely at least not in in the states i mean i know crime happens all the way around the world i would love to get some of our international viewers on sometime like let's talk about it what does it look like what is your view of us and the crime here like i would love to you think we should do the shows in alaska ain't shit happening there <laughs> ain't a motherfucking thing but snow <laughs> We work remote. We might as well move over down to Alaska. We can wear all the jewelry we want to wear. Play with the penguins. Like, what's up? <laughs> Let's move to Alaska. I don't know. I can't. I like a little bit of cold weather sometimes, but I can't do that motherfucking Alaska cold. And they got shit where they're talking about it's it's dark. How many months of the year? Oh hell no. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I don't have to be happy. There's always dark, dark and cold. Who wants to be outside? I the hell want to live there. <laughs> But exactly, you said, like, ain't nothing happened there. Well, we know here, one thing about Philly, I will say, once the hawk comes out, you want to see a lot of the, the, the spike, the violence. It's not going to spike. It's going to go down. Because the one thing we do, niggas do not like the call. How crazy is that? Like, you're willing to kill somebody any other season, but when it gets cold, it's like, oh, I think I'll chill. Like, I'm going to chill. Yeah. I'm going to hold this off till early spring. What? As soon as the weather breaks, it's on. <laughs> 
It's so damn sad. Oh, my brother. Hey, Ran Ran. That's my brother, Rock Jones, um, 822. One day you're going to have to come on here with us, Randy. Um, but he said it's been, it's, it's, it's dark over there for six months. That ain't the life for me. I'm a sunny ass bitch. So I need the weather to somewhat appease me. Could you imagine living in Alaska in 2020, like when COVID first hit? Yeah, ain't hit you. We, we're great. We're COVID. Just would be so upset. Like, I would be like, what is happening? <laughs> That's the problem. Probably, COVID probably wasn't even there like that. They was living because ain't nobody to fucking Alaska. <laughs> Except, what, who was the, one, the crazy woman that was about to run for president? Sarah Palin. Like, yeah, Sarah Palin. She back out there living her best life? Her and all 30 of her kids. <laughs> <laughs> I know they gave that one that had a baby a reality show, but I ain't seen too much about her lately. Um, we postponed the beef. Yep, Randy said, hey, hair to die for, baby. Um, okay, so let's get into politics a bit. Uh, Dex, let's lead with uh, some of the things that you were you had brought up about Joe. So there was this situation today, and the woman's name escapes me, and I literally just said it. So, but Joe Biden was doing a conference today, and he had mentioned, he said, like, where is, and I forgot her name. Something Pac, I think you said, or Pac. Yeah. I forgot. I'm sorry. Some, yeah. But he said, he said uh, where is this person? And everybody's looking around. They're like, uh, Joe, like, what are you talking about? And they assumed that he was talking about this um, specific woman who... Mm -hmm. Um, she's a representative. I'm sorry, guys. I'm I'm really sorry that like That's okay. so, you know I've been tripping on my words all the time. They know what you're saying, baby. Go keep going. Like, it's just killing me that I don't have this woman's name. Like that actually like bothers me. But like um, Jackie. He said, "Where's Jackie?" And um, basically, they they think that he's talking about one of the representatives. Her name was Jackie, and she passed away in August. And Joe released the statement after she passed away. So people are looking at it like um. Are are you okay? And then there was another like snafu earlier this week that he had where he was presenting an award or something. I think a medal to to Elton, mm -hmm. and he mentioned something to the effect that we spend so much money on AIDS research because of you, and like but it's your fault we spend all that money on AIDS research. And people have been looking at Joe Biden with the side eye, like um, is is everything okay at home? Like what's going on with you? I. I do think sometimes it's honest mistakes, but sometimes it's it's kind of hard to like, like dispel some of this stuff. Like this is kind of bizarre. The man is ninety. <laughs> like, is he ninety? Is he the scam and queen? He the same age? But I was Joe Biden. I think Joe Biden is like seventy eight. <laughs> like seventy eight years old. He's seventy nine years old. His birthday is November twenty. Well, he's eighty because his November is right around the corner. So he's seventy nine years old. But we can held it together more than that. <laughs> yeah. Not whatever the queen he was eating or shot, whatever vitamin she was on. <laughs> Joe, go get you some of those. Well, Barbara, three. She's holding. Well, I guess. What happened? Barbara Walter, she's ninety three now. No, but I think she is. She, what I know? Okay, what's going on with her? Because I've been seeing her name like pop up from time to time, but I haven't looked into it. What is this about? Can't find her. She hasn't been seen in like four years at this point. Well, I think because she has dementia. But, bad. But, but can we say it? Why can't we? Why can't they say that? Like, I don't the, know. who was created by Barbara Walters, right? And this shows mm -hmm. on every single day. And like they don't say anything, like they, they don't mention the woman at all. Her birthday just passed. They did say happy birthday to her, but like typically they don't mention her at all. They don't say anything. Whatever happened in this house, stay in this house. Now I'm Barbara Wawa. <laughs> we were yesterday on Bro Talk. We talked about Barbara Wawa because Jason knows that I'm obsessed with her. or Whatever we talked about. This boy is like it, journalism. Like listen, Jason. One day we all, I'm speaking into an existence, we all going to be working together on it. Because we, we need a Jason. Every crew needs a Jason because his ass going to get to the bottom of the shit. He tell. Down this random report about Barbara Walters and it's like she still takes visitors and she still takes phone calls from Joy Behar and, and it said on good days, like she'll recognize her voice and maybe try to have a conversation and they said on bad days, she just hangs up. 
leave that lady alone. And now, you know, I'm the proponent of let's find Barbara Walters, but now, could you imagine though, like you calling like your old boss or whatever, and then they hang the phone up on you? <laughs> like, why did you not talk to me? What's wrong with you? <laughs> <laughs> Barbara said, man, y'all know the fuck I ain't right. Leave me alone. I done created the view. I have left a legacy. Leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> And don't be showing them people what I look like in this state. I wish the fuck y'all would. Especially because our time is coming where we're going to be blow up big deals like in entertainment. When I get to an age when the I, I can't control my own drool and a motherfucker got to walk around with a napkin and I'm in a chair. Kid, I see that. I'm okay with that. Like, if you just dead me up or whatever. Just clean me up or whatever. But when no. I'm walking around and, like, the bowel movements are happening by themselves, I'm pissing on myself and all that stuff like that, like, take that dog out back and shoot it. <laughs> like, I don't want to live like that. I, that I don't want. Don't show me like this to nobody. And when I pass, should you do... It's on record. I am haunting the shit out of you because why you got me? And my, when I had it all together, I was in my right mind, body was functioning and everything. Did you ever see me out there looking the fuck crazy? <laughs> no. So why are you going to do this to me? <laughs> Knowing damn well, I can't take care of myself the way I need to. I'm going to get your ass on the other side. This ain't over, ho. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead oh no that was that's all i got okay um so yeah just just prayers with joe biden that's just what it is senility is that what they call it i don't know i might have said that wrong prayers for barbara walters <laughs> wait fm buster said i can't wait to go crazy <laughs> he's thinking of like he's not thinking like 90s he's thinking 70s you know when you turn like your age be nasty like you could just say whatever you want to say like you could just curse people out and nobody yeah. so you no. Nope. well i don't know he lives in philadelphia make sure it's <laughs> exactly <laughs> you get up in age you can do whatever you want to do you can say whatever you want to say curse people out be nasty and nobody's gonna say nothing about it that is that does seem like a fun time yeah, I guess of to just go out and say it. I guess so. But yeah, but once we get to the point where I can't control my shit, don't you? I wish you would have me walking around the state stadium waving with a trail of shit smelling, <laughs> saying hi to fans. Don't I do that to me. Um, I think it's a shorty page one. I don't think you can do that at 51. Do what at 51? Say whatever you want to say to people. Yeah, yeah. you can. You just, it's just consequences. Of, but even the elders, like, I'll go back and, like, listen, I will respect my elders, but my mom or granny, if you can only press but so far before I, I, I bounce back on you. If you're 51 years old and you talk to me sideways, I might hit you. <laughs> like, <laughs> crazy. If you're younger, it's consequences of repercussions. You can pop off, but be ready for the, the reaction. If I'm in my 30s, and you're in your 50s. Like, don't disrespect me. <laughs> like, <laughs> you do that to me. You, you definitely got to be like 65, 70 before you can do it to me. You get that title. And yeah. with that, you only get so many passes before I get you together. But that's another thing, too, though. Like, I think a lot of people who are older, they don't believe in the cancer culture either. You know how, like, now no. everything is like a thing for us to, like, make a debate about it or whatever. My grandfather, really my mom, too, who's 60, she's not debating the cancer culture. She says things that you're not supposed to be saying about people. I'm like, I'm like you can't use that word. She's like, why can't I? And I'm like, well, lose your job. Like, you just, whatever. Like, That's what I'd be like, this is my house. But she says it in public. <laughs> like, for instance, my mom has a, she has a beef with people who give their kids uh, pacifiers. So she walks into a store and she sees a baby, especially one that's walking, and the baby has like a pacifier. She's going to say to the parent, oh, you know, you can't be giving that baby a pacifier. I'm like, you're going to get 
beat up. <laughs> like, you can't do that. Like, you cannot do Or at least that. mind your business, B. Please mind when you're <laughs> Some people do stuff like this when they're around you because they want to show out. Like, I'll be on the phone. My, she would do it. Like, she doesn't even care that she's not, she, that she's by herself. Like, I'm like, you're going to get beat up. Like, <laughs> oh, by the way, her birthday's this week, so happy birthday. Yeah, happy birthday. Wait, her birthday was Tuesday. Wait, what is her mom? What's she Tomorrow. Your dad's birthday was Tuesday. You forgot? Yes, my dad's birthday was Tuesday. Libra season is here. It is in the house. And my mom's but, a Libra. Yes, your mother's a Libra. And if, wait, actually, okay, let's get out of politics. We're going to do a little more politics story. You said you wanted to address zodiac signs. Yes. So after this, we'll get into that. It's just a couple of more things I want to mention. Huh? So recently in Florida, prayers to Florida right now for our Hurricane Ian right now. Ian that's passing, making its way through. Y'all be so fake. Oh, God, y'all be so fake. Just prayers for them. It's so funny because I saw a video earlier trending, and they were like, what the fuck is wrong with these people in Florida? It was two little kids outside playing in the storm, and I was like, living in Florida for a few amount of years. I said, what's the issue? The other day I was watching CNN, and they were like, uh, they were talking that the storm is coming in Florida, and this kid was on there, and they were like, how do you feel? He's like, they, his family was evacuated. How do you feel? He's like, I'm upset. And they were like, why? He's like, I wanted to see the storm. And I said, Florida. Like, this is Florida. Like, it's not shocking. I have a friend who lives in Florida. This is no shade to talk, my friend. I text her because I'm concerned. Like, oh, what's going on? This and this third. She texts me back. She's like, oh, we're good. She's like laughing out loud. I'm on social media that making dance videos. And you were you y'all concerned about me. I'm like, you weren't born in Florida. So the fact that this is your in your head like this, you got a problem. It's every day like storms. And here's the thing, it could be bad, and I guess because they're just so used to it. But I remember back in the day, hurricane coming. All right, call the crew. We're going outside. We're playing in it. <laughs> <laughs> and we couldn't wait to see the after the fact. Once the trees came down, we playing. Let's climb it. Get in that tree. Uh, yeah, I would never. Yeah. It's a very different breed, but solely because they are so used to it down there. But it is, at the end of the day, a very serious situation because Mother Earth does not play in any way, shape, or form. So even with that said, still prayers for Florida. As, as what all, all the short shorty page said, um, Florida is crazy. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Even though Florida is crazy, but we're going to throw them a couple of prayers with that. Um, but also along with the storm, recently, there's been a, uh, the commissioner of, of God, Godsden County, Florida, mm -hmm. uh, his name is Jeff Moore. Well, Jeff Moore recently uh, stepped down off of his seat on the 23rd after a picture started circulating of him in a Klansman regal. From head to toe. Are you serious? Supposedly, it was a Halloween party. Oh. Um, looking at the picture, somebody definitely, and it had to be somebody in the crew that put that out there. Because why were the other faces scratched out? Well, you know. And his right in the middle. Well, if, it's a, if it's a Halloween party, like, don't you think that, do you think that's okay if it's a Halloween costume? You want your ass beat? I don't think it's that big of a deal. I, I don't think I would care. Maybe, you know what? And you know what? Maybe at that party, considering the place, it might not have been because based off of the, like, participants, it was all white. So they just felt at home. Like, why would this be a big deal? I'm home with my brethren. Well, I also think, like, I don't think that people, like, if people are actually into this kind of stuff, do you really think they would put it on and, like, post a picture in it and stuff like that? Like, the, it's a very private thing. So if you see the pictures, it's kind of like costumey, I guess. It's not like, I'm not really trying to do... You don't think so? No, Dexter, no, I do not. <laughs> no, 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 I do not. I don't care who the fuck you are. You get no passes for showing up to a fucking party like that. I'm sorry. Like, I can't go to a party with a real knife and stab people and be like, it was a Halloween party. What's up? That's what you're supposed to do. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, in the movies, they be doing it, though. They really do be going to the, the parties and stabbing people. And they be like, oh, yeah. remember it? Go to the teenagers having sex. Kill them in a the room. I had to start with the theme. Like, what? And Scream. That's like, that's how it starts. Scream 2. They started out with Jada Pickett. She was, they were stabbing her in the movie theater. And they're like, oh, the movie's called Stab. Ha, 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 ha. 
<laughs> Should that person get off? Because it was, I was, it was a role. I was playing. <laughs> like, what the fuck? And listen, and let's be clear. We ain't going to forget about, remember when Harry, even though we've adopted his ass right now, and I guess he feels as though maybe he's making up for it with his black wife who just realized that she was black a couple of weeks ago after dealing with the, 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 the royal family. But when he showed up in that motherfucking Hitler, uh, that Nazi uniform for Halloween too. Yeah, he was young, but you still did it. What you thought was going to happen? You thought you wasn't supposed to get no public backlash? It was, backlash ha it was Halloween. I'm just asking, was it Halloween? If it was Halloween, it's Halloween. <laughs> like, y'all, y'all been getting y'all feelings too much. It's Halloween. Y'all too much. Y'all being too motherfucking sensitive out here. If you can't celebrate racism on Halloween, when you gonna Where do can it? you do it? Where can you do it? Like the one day of the year. It's the one day of the year. Like, come on. If I can't do blackface on Halloween, then when am I going to be able to do it? break. Let me put my blackface on. How the fuck are they supposed to know that I'm Michael Jordan if I don't put, <laughs> cover my whole head and shave it ball and cover it in shoe polish and have a, um, okay. have a, uh, a Michael Jordan jersey on that says J Jordan and his number? You yeah. gotta sell it. Carry a basketball, like come, like come on. I feel like y'all, y'all just don't let people be themselves no more. That's the problem. That's the problem. You heard what Trump said. What's the N word? What's the N word? <laughs> What's the N word? <laughs> Nuclear. Nuclear. <laughs> Big boy. <laughs> Some of a country going to hell in a handbasket. I hope y'all ready. <laughs> so it's crazy though because like we're encouraging this. Because you know what's crazy? I don't get mad when I see stuff like this. I really don't get mad. I just whatever. I look if you want to wear a Klansman uniform, you wear a Klansman uniform. Like whatever. <laughs> did we learn anything from 2020? 2020 ain't teach us shit, did it? We right back to right back to fucking business. What you oh, what you mean? Oh, oh, oh. With, with the pandemic, with the, all the stuff that, the, the breakout of race, and y'all just, we out, we in these streets, and y'all just back to business as usual. What the fuck is wrong with y'all? <laughs> oh. I'm sick of it. I am sick of it. Um, one last uh, political story. One second. Oh, so last week there was actually a story that trended about an inmate in a Mississippi, no, an Alabama prison. I want to say either Mississippi or Alabama. I'm sorry, Dex. I know that's your hood, but sometimes I'm like, it's the same. I don't know why y'all want to do everything to Mississippi. It was not in Mississippi. I can assure you that it wasn't one of mine. Not this time? <laughs> 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 okay, so I want to say it was a prisoner um, in the Alabama prison by the name of, I might be saying it wrong, but I want to say it's Castillo, Castillo um, Vaughn. He was, he's being held in a, um, actually he started trending because his sister posted a picture of him and he's in, the man looks like he's on his deathbed. He's, a, I want to say a, a young man and either in his 20s or 30s, if his 30s, it's early side of 30s. But looking like he's on his deathbed, clearly being starved. Um, and she's like, I'm not getting any answers, no questions. They won't do anything to help my brother. Well, of course, she put it out there. The Internet's did what the Internet does. And the shit went haywire. Shit, I was even one of the people who, oh, that's the number. Let me look up this prison and give him a call. I said, oh, y'all get hit up bad because either it just wouldn't stop ringing or you called and it was busy. I said, oh, the internet about to handle this. They about to get y'all to fuck together. <laughs> um, so the boy was moved to another prison only to entail the same, the same treatment, I guess. At that point, the sister was saying that, um, <clears throat> the sister was saying that they're denying him of any type of medical help. And at that point in time, they blocked off communication. So he was really in there with no one. They said the last message she got, was able to get from him was 
because of one of the other inmates um, was able to reach out to her. But um, there has been an update, and this is like, you can tell, again, when it comes to politics and the prison systems, they're trying to cover their tracks. They released a statement, and supposedly back in August, uh, he had surgery in a hospital where he was treated. He, they said that he elected to leave the hospital early, therefore foregoing any, any treatment after the case, after, after the surgery. I have a hard time believing that because I'm like, if that were true, why is this boy begging for anybody on the outside to help him? And it's like, I know some people will want to say like, well, he's in prison and it depends on what he did and karma. And it's like, I kind of understand that, but that I'm man, that person. I know, but that man is in jail serving his time. And we don't know what, and here's I, and I will admit, we, this is why we need Jason on the team. Jason, look up and let us know what he was in there for. <laughs> I don't know why he's in jail. I will say, looking at that man's condition, it's bad. Like, he looks. That's like a Terman camp. Like, that's what he looks like. I don't even want you guys to look up the picture. That's how bad it is. But, like, he, yeah. like he's sick. You know what I mean? Like, with, like, something. He, his body's deteriorating. And you can mm -hmm. see. For me, though, I do. I do need to know what he did. Like, because, yes, like, he's serving his time, but, like, some crimes, like, I, well, at the end of the day, no, people aren't doing their job. Like, because even yeah. if they're in jail for whatever reason, like, you have to feed them and, like, make sure they're not dying. Just, yes, like, wasting away. But I would still like to know, like, what he's in there for. I mean, yeah, I think, I feel like what people would know, I don't think it's anything, like, too crazy, because I feel like if it were, we, like, if he was a serial killer, or he, a woman beat her and killed her, and, like, shit like that, of course, what people would know, it would be a bit different. I don't think it was anything, because uh, here's the thing, being a black person in America, we do have a lot of innocent motherfuckers sitting behind bars, or maybe not necessarily innocent, but the punishment we know damn well does not fit the crime. And at the end of the day, that man is in jail serving his time. He should not be looking like that. That is, it is unacceptable, it is disgusting, and it is shameful. The, even though they are prisoners, they are still people. And you do not treat people like that. I'm sorry. That That's just how I feel about it. So... Um, I think we can wrap that up. We'll just, you know, send continued prayers to his family. Hopefully something, hopefully he, he returns to better health after this. I'm not saying that he should be removed from prison because depending on what, he, maybe the hospital, but still be under some type of, I mean, at the end of the day, if you did the crime, you do have to do the time, but that man don't deserve that. And a lot of people don't. So I just hope that this situation, we do know. I mean, it's the first to us, but we know shit like this happens in prisons all the time. So hopefully um, this will do something, you know, to prevent things like this happening in the future down the road. So we'll, we'll see, but prayers for this man and his family and this, this, this situation. But um, Dexter, let's get into Zodiacs. You wanted to touch on that a little bit? <laughs> We have finally listened to the Beyonce Renaissance album, and I know it came out in July. Yes, Leo season. Yeah, I finally listened to it, and today there was something, it came out, and I just thought this was kind of fun because I actually know the songs now. Um, these are the songs based on your Zodiac sign. So for, do you, have you listened to it? Oh, child, please, yes. <laughs> okay. So um, do you like the song, I'm That Girl? I like it. Not, I do like it a lot. I'll, my favorite one is, but I'll let you, after you want to continue and then I'll tell you what my favorite one is. Yeah, um, I'm That Girl is yours, though. That's for Leo. It's like, that's the I can see that. Well, you see it. Um, <laughs> for an Aquarius, this is kind of funny, too, because this is actually one of my top three songs on the top. I only like, like, four or five songs, to be honest with you. I feel like the, okay. the beginning of the album is really good. There's one that it's in the middle, and then after that, completely downhill. Yeah. But I'd agree. Sorry. My song for an Aquarius is Break My Soul, which is actually one of my favorite songs on the album. And I think it's very fitting for like where I'm at in life, like right now, too. Right. Um, okay. They said Capricorns. Capricorns. I don't see. 
I Whoever did was wrong, because Leo should definitely be alien superstar. I'm just saying. Be alien superstar. Like, that is. Oh, that? Aquarius should be alien superstar. Toy, in alien superstar, the girl calls herself the one. She calls yeah. her unicorn. These are things that, <laughs> for me, like. That's me. Like, that's all the stuff that I call myself. Um, Capricorn. Yeah, I'll take Aquarius. Listen, I, I have an Aquarius moon sign. So either Leo, Aquarius, or Scorpio. That's who that song is for. <laughs> for Capricorn, they ask for a Capricorn is church girl. I can see that. What, what month is Capricorn? Capricorn, I want to say it's uh, like January. End of like maybe end of December, December, January is Capricorn. Okay. I don't know if I know too many Capricorns. Um, yeah, my brother, I want to say MLK was a Capricorn. Oh, because he is. My a brother Christian, he's a Capricorn. My best friend, um, Nicole, is a Capricorn. My best, my other best friend, Chelsea, she's Capricorn and Sagittarius, like both of them together. She's a cuss baby. Um, and then the Aries, which is March 21st through April 19th, their song is Heated. I don't know too many. Oh, my niece is an Aries. Aries. I can see yes. God of War. Heated. Heated. Heated is right. Heated is the song on the album to me that y'all like, y'all like it for attention. Like, the song is not good. And y'all be pretending like y'all like it. And I'm just like, this song is kind of weird. It's like, and it's funny because my niece is an Aries. And I swear, she'd just be liking stuff just to like it. Like, this is... <laughs> Very odd. Like, you're just all over the place. It's stupid. Well, I would say the name, because Aries can definitely get heated. Like, they're very cool, calm, and collected, but don't get them heated, because it's going to be a problem. <laughs> Isis, who I don't, I don't know when the month is, but the Pisces, they gave them Alien Superstar, which, by the way, to me, is the best song on the album. <laughs> like Absolutely. Yes. When, it, when that album dropped, everybody kept talking about Church Girl, and I was like, I mean, it's good, but the real one is Alien Superstar. Y'all, but y'all, it took a while for people to, for that to be like, oh, this song is lit. But, yeah. yeah. And then for the Taurus, all my close friends, honestly, are Taurus, or a lot of them. The song they got was Cozy, which I think is fitting, because like the song is about being like comfortable with yourself and stuff like that, and those people are so sure of themselves almost too sure of themselves. I would say that not all Tauruses, but some definitely do lead, I want to say, an ego. Most cop Tauruses are very cool, calm, collected. If they have to, like, go there, there will. But it is two different types of Taurus. But you do have some who just lead an ego. And if you ask me, that's a very false sense of security. Then I'll just finish it out. Summer, re Summer Renaissance is Gemini. Gemini is like my mo like I don't know why, but I just don't. I never met a Gemini that I was like, oh, I like you. So I have friends that are Gemini's, but like I just think they're they're a lot to deal with. Gemini, because they have two faces. It's the two sides of the Gemini. <laughs> Hit on these people too. I really do. Um, Cancer is Jason. I know what you are. And then um, Cancer, oh, that to Jason. And I oh, and I, Ali, who was that? Ali Kipper four hundred five. He caught us. He said, first time I'm watching and not cooking." Next time we're going to be doing a YouTube at your, at, at, not a YouTube, well, YouTube, baby, but at your house when you cooking us a meal, okay? That's what we're going to do. <laughs> okay. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Didn't know what I fit up. The next one is Cancer, which is Plastic Off the Sofa, which is my wife's sign and favorite song off the album. I said, okay. girl, Virgo, they gave them Virgo's group, which, by the way, is probably the worst song on the album. Um, for Libras, they gave them Pure Honey. I don't know how that goes. I forgot that song. Right. And that's on the, the, the back side that we honestly, probably after Church Girl, I stopped listening. Um, Scorpio got all up in your mind. Runner up for worst song on the album. Uh, <laughs> Sagittarius got energy. To me, energy was like, oh, Beyonce, like this, this genre of music is hidden. Please make a song like this and we can just get it done with. That's how, that's what energy gives me. And okay. You have Capricorn with Church Girl and Aquarius would break my soul. Okay, I guess I could I could see a lot of that. I, I think I think they did a good job with tailoring like it too. But I'll still say with Leo, y'all got it motherfucking wrong because it should be Alien Superstar. They gave Leo. Your, I really don't know how that song goes, but yeah, like it's just yeah.
Now you want to make me go through and um, try to tr try to find it again. I am a Libra and I am an alien stupid uh, superstar. LOL. Unique. Look, unique. <laughs> Well, look, Tenoria, now I like good Libras, but y'all know y'all like the lie, so we we just going to leave that there. Y'all know that ain't y'all song. Let me stop. <laughs> Let me stop. Um, we love y'all. Thank y'all so much for uh, checking in. Oh, wait. Some little, like, throwback to your childhood, kind of, sort of. McDonald's has been, maybe this is just a, you know, a way to take our mind off of Byron Allen going ahead and we both, taking them for damn near everything that they worth. We both got a childhood um, story. I got one too for you. Okay, but um, but McDonald's all the, after being discrim for discrimination and not wanting to advertise with black owned companies. So you know how they like to do. Let's throw something else in there so they'll forget about that. And for me, I don't want to say you're forgiven, but yeah. So. <laughs> That's you cycling. Wait, are we are we okay, guys? I just want to make sure. Can you guys see me? We're good. Yeah. Okay. Wait now. All right. All right. We're back now. Okay. Good. Um, all right. Um. But to get our minds off of the lawsuit that they just law lost, they are bringing back. Or it's a new concept. It's Happy Meals for adults. Toya, I don't care what they do. I'm still not. About to go to McDonald's and eat nothing. No, thank you. Listen, I can't say that. You know that's my dirty meal. That's one of my dirty meals of choice. I'm going to get that two cheeseburger meal. Or actually, last time I got a little fancy because they started using real meat again. So I got me the quarter pounder. But I'm always going to get me the quarter, the, the, a, a little dirty burger with them dirty fries. Give me the iced tea. Now, the, the, the sweet tea, I could do that. Or the um the high C, even though a lot of them have taken that away, and I really got upset when they did that shit because don't nothing slap a, a a McDonald's Sprite is good too, but um don't nothing slap like that that uh high C orange with that dirty burger, them dirty fries. It's the the greatest combination. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if McDonald's right now, if they ever brought them back. Yeah, don't start with me either, because I don't feel like going back and forth with y'all today. But the only thing that I would give for McDonald's if they ever brought it back is the pumpkin pies. And I eat pumpkin pies. I'm black, and I eat pumpkin pies, and they don't even have to be warmed up. I like pumpkin pies, and I'm not apologizing for it. <laughs> don't start with me. <laughs> don't start with me. I eat. I don't think anybody, that's the first time. I've, now, the fries, I've heard always hitting. You are the first person I probably heard on earth well, to say that their pumpkin pies at McDonald's be hitting. Not the apple. Not the apple, the pumpkin. When I used to work at McDonald's, right, I would, uh, like, I I would I have to drop the pies. And I always knew that, like, one them for the rest of the day, like, like, when I go home or whatever. So, like, when I would drop them, I would not drop all of them. I would drop, like, you know, enough to get through the day or whatever, but I would always keep me four tucked up, tucked away, and I would bake them. <laughs> I would make them before I would leave for the day, and I'd pack my pies up and come up my business. That was the best. <laughs> I loved working at McDonald's. <laughs> so if you do subscribe and go up there, don't give you your adult hot happy meal without your your apple your your pumpkin pie, but it will have a toy. If they will have, a, they're bringing some of the toys back from our, when we were kids, and I guess they're going to put an adult spin. I don't know what the adult spin would be. It's it's kind of weird, but you know what y'all can bring back? I want y'all to bring back the motherfucking mother babies that y'all used to have, the collector's idols. That's what you can bring back. Please and thank you. Because I never collected all of mine when I was a kid, and I would like it. Somebody said, Allie Kipper said they need to bring back the big and tasty, and no the hell they don't. Yes. That shit was the big and nasty, yep. and I tried it twice. I tried it once. I thought it was a fluke because somebody said, it's good. I, you must have just had a bad one. Had another one and ran to the turlet again. It was nothing good about that big and tasty. <laughs> <laughs> them big and tasty that they used to put the mayonnaise on the burgers and extra onions and they were wrapping in like this aluminum foil type of stuff. <laughs> and you know what's crazy? I used to be like, oh, I would never eat a quarter pounder. I'm not eating too much meat. That's disgusting. 
And I'm like, just I just I just do a big and tasty. Mind you, the big and tasty <laughs> quarter pounder with mayonnaise on it. <laughs> like that's what <laughs> <laughs> but that's why I didn't like it because of the mayonnaise. Oh, I love mayonnaise on a sandwich. I can't like I I that's something and, and this was before, honestly, before I started like getting into shape and things like that and working out. Years ago, I cut mayonnaise out. I'm like, if it's a dish that doesn't necessarily need it, I don't like potato salad. It needs to be there. Certain salads, it kind of needs to be there. Certain meals, it needs to be there. If it doesn't, I'm good with it. I don't need it. I when I go to Chick Fil A to get my bags of ice, I also get a couple packs of mayonnaise. And then like when I like I had a sandwich from like the the deli the other day, and I put like I had mayonnaise on it, but I put like extra. <laughs> Your cousins love putting extra mayonnaise on stuff, and I'll be wanting to throw up in my mouth every time. <laughs> but look, speaking of childhood, though, there is another childhood favorite that's coming back, Barney. They're coming out with a Barney documentary October 12th on Peacock, I believe, and um, it's called I Love You, You Hate Me, and it's not like a positive thing either. They're talking about the um the, the hatred and threats and behind the scenes drug accusations and whatnot that the cast and characters on Barney faced. So it's not a good documentary. It's one of those things where it's like kind of like going and giving you the nitty gritty of what was going on behind the scenes of, of the show Barney. Barney was giving the kids drugs? Well, I don't know if it was him doing it or like just somebody else on set. Because, you know, a lot of times with these child stars, it's always like the producers and stuff like that that like... Yeah. Then the guy, you you don't even know who really was behind the mask. Like it was never like, maybe people do know, but I don't know who was behind the yeah. Barney or whatever. But who knows, like what he was doing or could have been doing? Because essentially, this is a grown man working with children. That's true. I wonder who. It makes me think. Who was in? Um, what was the little girl name in Barney? Not the little girl. She was the dinosaur. What was her name? Baby. Bob. The, yeah, Baby Bob. Mm -hmm. Now don't come out here to. Now, Baby Bob held a special place in my heart. Please don't put nothing on Baby Bob like that. Please. Barney had the kids cut us clean. Well, not us. Because I was a little older. Once we looked up, I did know Barney. But because of my younger siblings, my brother Randy, I'm not sure if he's still on here. He was the Barney boy. It was right around that time for him. But I did used to watch. He had these kids out here having fun to clean up. Clean up. Clean up. Everybody. Everywhere. Clean up. Clean up. Everybody do your share. <laughs> so I think that is true that the guy who voiced the Barney character was black. But I don't know if he did it the whole time, too. Like, But I know at some point it was a black man. But you know my, my biggest memory of Barney? And this is not even a good one. But my <laughs> biggest memory of Barney, I had the toys and I, all this stuff like this. I was obsessed or whatever. But y'all, I used to piss on them Barney sheets like it was nobody's business. Like, I... <laughs> Sleep. And like in my sleep, I used to let it rip. Like them Barney sheets, I loved them. So my mom would always get mad after I would do it and wash them or whatever. But boy, when I used to wet the bed, I used to tear them Barney sheets up. <laughs> <laughs> that boy used to be swimming. <laughs> like, <laughs> you don't kill Barney with your piss. <laughs> Every single night, like for a good solid year. Like that boy used to get it. <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> now, wasn't that you were just so happy to be sleeping with Barney, having like great dreams of Barney that he just brought in some type of energy. You just, yeah. it felt like paradise. So P doesn't happen in paradise. And then the morning you wake up and you say, oh, it does. It may be, it may be that. Or maybe it's the fact that I drank a Coca-Cola right before I got them with the bed. I don't know. What is he up there? What is he up there? <laughs> but something that that boy got it taken care of. It's terrible. Well, listen, We'll, 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 this is the spin we'll do to it. Once this documentary drops and we get the full picture of the culmination of, of Barney and, and depending on the offenses that he did amongst like the children or cast and crew. So maybe you're a, you're kind of a psychic. You intuitively knew that Barney should have been pistol. Now look at that. You go, you're a good publicist. Come on, my future career in PR. That's the spin. You knew it all along, Dexter. You knew it. And you know, if Barney was black, you know them kids was getting on to his nerves. <laughs> <laughs> I, that's all my stories that I have. Remember, we, we, 
we went down memory pissy lane <laughs> with Barney. But I know for what. I cannot wait now. So the, when the, do we know when it airs, when it's coming out? I think it's October 12th on Peacock. On Peacock? Yeah, we will definitely be watching that. And I cannot wait to come back. So that's like, damn, it's basically, it seems like next week or the week after this year, the motherfucking flew by. I, yep. I don't even know where the hell we at at this point. Um, but all right, so that's Barney. Um, oh, update, you guys. Uh, how are you feeling about Rihanna? I returning for for the super bowl she's going to be the headline performer are you I, excited yeah i mean i'm I'm happy about it but i would like for rihanna to not I'm, i don't care about the album i want rihanna to tell me her baby's name the baby's sex get <laughs> a picture of that baby that's like you don't think that's crazy that she hasn't shown us anything with the baby she ain't got to yes you do let me see it. Brianna I didn't give y'all no music for what eight damn years, six to eight years. You don't. You'll see my baby when you see it. Yeah, I don't care about the music. Focus on me. Focus on a side being thrown in the in the mosh pit and. <laughs> Boy, I tell you. Focus on this Fenty. That's why you worried about what the hell is going on at, at, with the baby. The baby good. Focus on that. But the funny thing I find today was like, y'all gonna be mad when she get up there and give y'all a Fenty, uh, like a like a makeup tutorial. Do a little makeup tutorial. Show y'all her fashion lines. Ain't no music, bitch. If she was me, if I was producing her like performance, I would totally do that. Like start it off with that kind of stuff. Like give it like a minute where it starts off with like a Fenty fashion show, whatever. With like like girls walking the runway doing their makeup while they're walking the runway holding her products whatever because that's like a good troll and then when you get yeah. the runway then she pops up and she starts and do her songs or whatever oh my God. and it's so she will find some way to get fenty in there trust I me they should troll like she should actually do because people are like what if she does a makeup tutorial what if they actually did something like that and then the i'm gonna do it dancers or something like that like, that would be kind of like because it's like you're playing into what the internet is saying and stuff like that but you're still like giving us a show Mm-hmm. Like come out, make you think it's just gonna be a little tutorial. Yeah. But it really is a whole production. I like that. Smack nine two seven. Hey, Dad. Dad earlier. I know you just coming, but earlier we shouted you out. Happy birthday, Daddy. Birthday. And Dexter's mommy. His birthday her birthday is coming up soon. Libra season. I like it. I've heard I like it. Libra season is here, but they've also called y'all what are the things I've heard? Liars. <laughs> it's something is it oh no, Virgo. Y'all was calling them Virgos. What month is Virgo? Li Libra, they call it Libra. <laughs> That's what it is. I know, see, I, all Libras that I know, I like I like Libras probably the most. Your dad is a Libra. Oh, Libra are, are fun. They're a good time. Your dad's a Libra, my mom's a Libra, my ex is a Libra, Ashanti, she's a Libra. <laughs> Libras, I love Libras. I love Libras. They fun. Kim Kardashian's a Libra too. That's why she be lying on. <laughs> Certain people, when it comes to these zodiac signs, it's like they be talking about you didn't even have to tell me what you was. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> I already knew. <laughs> I already do. But yes, we are in Libra season. Libra season is about balance and love and good communication. How y'all great communicators but be lying at the same time? That's neither here nor there. So. <laughs> I'm just playing. But yes, happy Libra uh, season, everybody. Um, also on some music news. Child, Twitter, y'all was mad at um, Little Young Miami, y'all. So, young Miami, Carisha, um, she's actually been having great success with her um, podcast, Carisha, Please. And because of it, she's been getting more excited about it. And she's looking forward for the continuation of her career. And she recently stated uh, that she wanted to be the Black Oprah. Yeah. That's understandable. Twitter lost their damn mind. I don't know why. Like, oh, I, I think when she says that, she means that she wants to do it for, like, like hip hop culture, you know what I mean? Like, like black focus, like focus on like black issues and things like that. And I don't even mean like on a full scale, but just like the stuff she talks about. Like nobody else, yeah. Megan Thee Stallion, 
if they want to have sex with her. Nobody else is going to do an interview with Kevin Gates and ask the kind of the questions she did. Like, I think it, it actually makes sense when she said it. I don't think... No, into- we're not going to do that. Oprah's a, a journalist, Carisha. Now, I'm not saying, Carisha, you can get... <laughs> Shout out to Portia Williams. The queen. <laughs> the queen of housewives in the media. Like I see I somewhat see what everybody is saying that. It's like Cause Carisha, she gonna give you the ratchet shit, the shit that we can talk about at the, you know, when we do the get-togethers, the family functions, the holidays, like that's what Carisha is going to give you. So with that, I will say, like, okay, it's a form, a certain form of blackness. I think, but we are not going to take away. Oprah is a black woman, and let's say she has catered to the other half for the majority of her career. Once she became Oprah, then she did bring it home a little bit. But this was when I was like, well, Carisha ain't so right. Because when Oprah be taking us inside her house for the holidays, what the fuck is you eating? Yeah. <laughs> I think a better word for her to have been used was urban. I think she should have said, I want to be yes. Oprah. Yes. And, and that's the, but again, Baby, you're not a journalist. You ain't never going to be Oprah. I think there is a lane for you. There is an avenue because we have fun with you. But let's be clear. Carisha, please. Ain't nobody going to you. <laughs> no one is going to Carisha to be in, like for real information of the world and what's like really happening. And it's not to take away from what she does because she's entertaining as hell. I love Carisha. I love the Miami girl or my, what city girls. I love Saucy. I love their interaction. But she tried to talk about I want to be the black Oprah. Yeah. Keep Oprah name out your mouth. We're not going to do that. I, I guess she couldn't say Wendy because Wendy was black and like we knew it. So yeah, we probably but, do that. Do you huh? What she said? What she said, sweetie? What had happened? I just don't know Wendy's, you know. Like she, you know, Wendy, you know, would you call Wendy Williams a journalist? Well, that's why I said you can compare yourself to Wendy. Fair, fair. We're not, I mean, listen, Wendy went to journalism, she went to college for journalism, I would say. It probably started out that way. And some of the stuff she would go in and get her facts on, but there's a clear difference between journalism and blog shit <laughs> and, and, and certain other stuff. Baby, you or Portia Williams, y'all not, y'all not journalists. <laughs> Don't make that mistake no more. Don't com- Please do not compare yourself to people who have, who have, who have done the work to gain that title and not just saying that they'd worked all 10 years to get there. 10 years of journal. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's that. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, um, oh, so this will, I guess this will probably be one of the last, oh God, how, what time is it next? What time did we start? <laughs> we started 618. What time is it now? <laughs> so, just what is it? 725. God damn. Okay, we not. <laughs> we're not going to stay on much longer. We can say, all right, so here are the options. We can go order in the court, which that consists of Cardi B and Tasha K. But we, or no, R. Kelly, Tasha K, and Cardi B. Just real quick with those, though, um, the, the Tasha K one, she's running. She's running out of the country because she doesn't want to pay um, Cardi B that money. $3 million, I believe it was. Four million, actually, because it was the other fee, so it was like four point two five million. She's running because Cardi's trying to garnish her wages, so she's out of here. She's trying to get out of here. Then a- now she's denying those rumors, but she did deposit a, a bunch of money into an app to a, a, a bank in Africa. So that's why people are saying, "I know you ain't. I know you ain't trying to skip." T- um, and then with R. Kelly, a judge has ordered him to pay for victims. Yeah, so um, R. Kelly, he is, uh, he was, uh, has to pay $300,000 in New York for a lot of, of 
we don't know how many victims, but a good portion of the victims, that money will go toward their herpes and, I guess, men, Is that I guess, therapy. Allegedly, right? I mean, if 20 bitches is talking about, I got herpes, like... Well, you didn't get it. Okay, if 20 people say they have herpes and I say I don't have it, then what does that mean? Y'all must have got it from each other. <laughs> well, you better go pull your records like Cardi B did and tell us that you don't. No, I'm in jail. I'm going to do that. Hold his ass down there and take the swallow. However the fuck you, you, you look for herpes, swab it. I don't know what the fuck you got to do. Look at the bumpity bump, bump, bump. If it's on the peen, it, if it's on the pickle, if the pickle is bumpy, it's probably a herp there. I'm just saying a herp, a wart or something. So, and I don't think they give herpy medicine like that in the prison like that. So who knows? Maybe, I mean, shit, they ain't taking care of niggas after surgeries in prisons. You think Kells is getting his herpy meds? It's one thing for you to run around and say that I did all this stuff. It's like, okay, whatever. I, I did it. You're not about to get me to admit to having herpes. I'm sorry. Like, no, you got it. I'm not doing that. I, I'm not doing that. No. You got it. We saw the docu series. Oh, everything that you was just slanging it with who you got it. And really, you lucky. That's all you got. Hello. And we're not talking about the victims. Victims. We ain't talking about that. No, no, I'm talking about him. Like he's lucky. That's all he has now. Like that, you're lucky. That's it. That, the way you were moving. Mm -hmm. Somebody said the block is hot in cell block H. But keep up. Keep your tour. Your press run. Um, Dahmer docu series. So Dexter, let's talk a little bit about that. We can save the two C for another time, like next week, because I feel like that's a conversation. That the conversation is ghosting, so we can bring that up next week. But I really want to get into the Dahmer docu series while people are still talking about it. So, um, enlighten us. I think I personally have not watched it, and I honestly feel like I I was interested, very interested at first. But now what I'm seeing how people are relating to it, like they are taking it and making it seem like he like people are calling out, oh, he was hot. Um, Rick Ross, let me get some of them Dahmer shades. It's like they're putting a coolness to this person who was a mass murderer. And that just does not sit well with me. And and it's sad because I'm sure it's a very good docu-series or, you know, it's not a docu-series. Huh? It's a TV show. Yeah, it's a TV show. And I'm sure it's very good. And part of me still wants to see it. So maybe I'll watch it after, like, people stop talking about it because just the conversation around it, it makes me very uncomfortable. But, Dex, you have watched it. So what are your thoughts about the series, the different angles that people are taking issue with it. I know Netflix recently took down that it's LGBTQ. They had that as like that programming. But I mean, even with that, I was like, well, it, <laughs> they really had that up there like that. Hey, you know, he was killing them, right? <laughs> like that's what he was doing. He was killing. He was a gay man and he was killing gay people. Like, I don't understand. I'm not understanding the issue there, but everybody wants to be inclusive, but I guess only inclusive when it, it, you feel as though it paints you in the right way. But that's a conversation for another day. Go Dexter. So I did like it. I thought it was good, but it bothers me that I thought it was good. Like, I think that I, I watch these type of things because I'm into that kind of stuff. Like, I yeah. like mystery type of stuff, whatever. Um, I like documentaries and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. One thing about this story and the reason why it's so polarizing is that I don't think a lot of us really knew in depth how serious this situation was. I know for me, I've heard the name before, and I think I might have known that he was killing people. I think I knew that. Yeah. That he was a serial killer, and I knew the name. But that's mm -hmm. all I knew about it. It's not something I was very familiar with. But mm -hmm. I watched it, and I understand, like, the, the, the problems with it. But at the same time, though, like, this series, while, like, I don't like what they are doing. Um, I don't like what they're doing as far as kind of, like, humanizing him a little bit. Because I do feel like they're doing that. Oh, somebody's from, from Hawaii. Oh, hell, aloha, me mom's catering. Oh, she was from here in Philly, she says. Oh, we got a message. Oh, she, 
we had some questions about Hawaii, the violence in Hawaii. If they, it, like, you're from Philadelphia, so what's worse, Philadelphia or Hawaii, as far as violence? I think I know the answer. But she said, "Well, I," she said, "Well, I'm in Hawaii, so what that tell you?" <laughs> I said, "Aloha, ho." <laughs> <laughs> but but, but Jeffrey, the Jeffrey Diamond one, I think that at the beginning of it, it is a little difficult to kind of get through because they're showing it's not super graphic either, but they're showing. Okay killings and stuff like that they kind of show his background and i don't really like that because it does kind of give like the human perspective of like oh i kind of get why he's like and i don't like that um, yeah i think the more you go into it at some point i don't know the exact episode number but they start to really go into the victim stories and they really start to kind of show like the victim's families and how it affected them and i do think that mm -hmm. really good they showed how it affected his parents as well which is a really interesting like conversation piece too, because a lot of people, not necessarily in the same level, but a lot of parents are dealing with kids who are like out of control and do crazy stuff. And it's like, how do you navigate that? Oh, mm -hmm. I thought it was really good. I think the criticism is warranted, but I do think it's worth checking out. All right, I'm gonna I'm take a look at it. I just hate how, and I'm all for it. We know things, it gets fanatical and people say things. Like I was all for, uh, what was the the damn tiger man? He's his ass in jail. He ain't never getting out. But what what was it? Tiger Joe Exotica, Tiger King. Yes, Tiger King. Now I was all in that. Some of them, I'm like, yes, that's a trend. Let's go. But after a while, they was about let him out. I'm like, you motherfuckers are crazy. He ain't coming out. <laughs> now, <laughs> so I do think that that comment was kind of unnecessary. Mm -hmm. but realistically speaking, right. You could just talk about the glasses themselves or just go get the glasses. Like, associating the glasses with him because he wore those glasses, I understand that, but that's also tacky to do that. Yeah. So they did say, um, Austin Andre, Austin under, underscore, her mom said that um, a lot of the victims were up, uh, outraged and disgusted by it in their families, I should say. I don't necessarily expect the person who dealt with the situation to be okay with it either. Like, regardless of how this story is told. Like, yeah, absolutely. I get that. So I, I'm not saying that I don't take them serious or their complaints serious, because I do. But at the same time, though, it's like, I also wouldn't expect you to be like, oh, yeah, I'm fine with you doing this. Like, I, yeah, because it, it relieves them. It, re it brings, like, things that, not that it ever goes away. Those memories are there, but that's a hurtful thing. You spend all these decades trying to get back to normal life and then boom the docu the docu series pops up and we don't know i mean it was a very public trial but we don't and then necessarily the the producers and directors they really don't have to get their permission no. to do it but i don't know i kind of feel as though i don't know if phone calls were made to some of the family <laughs> mentors prior to you call them they say no like are we going to suspend production like i don't no we're going to continue production but i'm going to at least bring it out here i would love to bring you in it some type of way if not it's understandable but being that you're so close to it i feel as though a phone call should have worked but again do it let them know but the production is still happening with or without your consent no offense but i just feel as though when it comes to certain things yes and we don't know if production did that to a lot of them in these stories i would hope that they did but we know how this business thing goes mm -hmm. nine times out of ten they probably did and maybe to a couple of them yeah but some people get upset when they're not being compensated too so like exactly them, they might have been like, yes, but I want to be paid X, Y, Z. I just, I just don't think it's easy to satisfy a, a large scale of people in a situation like this. No, you're absolutely right. Um, you are absolutely right. Okay, so we did go, we're trying to get better with shortening the show somewhat, but we just be, we just be up here talking. And you know what, maybe we'll say ghosting also. We'll bring it up next week on the show, but we'll lead with that in the podcast and so you guys make sure you check that out. You'll get that conversation. You'll get that conversation next week when the podcast uh, comes out. So the topic will be ghosting. So that'll be a little nugget. We're going to keep it funny, but real, like we always try to do. Um, but yes, thank y'all so much for joining. Hi, Miss MLB 464. Money over morals. That, come on. Come on. I think that's a good place to end. Money over fucking morals that's it. That's all of this stuff for sure uh-huh even the barney so, huh? 
from the Barney thing we talked about. Like, at the end of the day, if some bad stuff happened, it happened to kids. And you guys didn't say nothing about it until 2022 when you can make a profit off of it? Let's talk about Tiffany Hatch. When you can make I a I know it's old news, but that mama. Money. He was at the birthday party yeah. a couple of years ago. What's going on? It didn't Money look. over morals. That should be a T-shirt. Austin Andre Mom. Put it on the T-shirt. Trademark it. Why is he? Let's trademark it. <laughs> like, we're we going to cut her in on the deal. We can't. Well, yeah, now, we can do money over money morals all the time. Over morals. We're going to do money <laughs> over morals. We got no morals. You're going to have to win. <laughs> so, off the Nigeria mom. So, we'll ask you. So, I'm just letting you know we're going to create a, a whole line out of that. Rather you want it or not, it's going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> This is your moment to have some affiliation with it or come on on and try to get get a couple checks with us, okay? <laughs> <laughs> and she, look, she said she ain't going in business with you, Dex, and then gave you the finger chat. <laughs> no morals over here. <laughs> <laughs> so you are the moral less one. Okay. I'm going to try to play on the, on the road to, you know, righteousness, but... I don't know how long I'm gonna last. The Wait. detour be coming. <laughs> Minimum balance over here. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Thank y'all so much for listening. You can catch Minimum Balance Pod Minimum Balance Podcast on anywhere you can stream podcasts. We're there. Just look up Minimum Balance. Uh, we will be back next Wednesday. Again, we say Monday through Wednesday. If we ever go on a Thursday, we'll let you know. But we appreciate y'all, y'all pulling up with our schedule could be any one of those pop-up days but y'all show up and we show out and we're so appreciative of it our youtubers we love y'all we see y'all growing every day like every time i see a little follow subscriber i'll be like okay <laughs> all right and what is it next our following might be small but they are engaged <laughs> And we're going to talk about that on the podcast. So we're going to definitely break that down for you guys. Yes, because it ain't going. Trust me, y'all. It ain't going to stay strong. It ain't going to stay small. So tell y'all, friend. Tell your mama. Tell your pa. Tell your friends. Tell them all about it. This is where you come and you get that good fun and that real conversation. Because we gotta, we gotta talk about what's really happening out here, mixing with some fun. So thank y'all so, so, so much. Um, me, mom's catering. Send us some of that. Uh, send us some of that Hawaii uh, weather over this way. I need a good palm tree outside of my house. Wait, talk about this. We needed to snow. You're right. <laughs> I guess I might have to go out there. We well, we can have. Well, can you just send me a palm tree? I'll plant it in the snow outside of my house. I just, I just need it. Or send me Jason Momoa. Mom, me, mom's catering. Do you know him? A family member, a good-looking family member, or something. Send me a fine Hawaiian. <laughs> All right, y'all. Thank you so much. We love you, and we will see you next week. Bye. <laughs> oh, shit. Here we go. Okay, end it. <laughs>